Hey guys, it's Michael from Concrete Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over how to figure out the empirical formula of a compound through combustion analysis. So essentially, when you burn something, how can you find its empirical formula? We'll go over two examples of how to do that. So to start, a hydrocarbon fuel is fully combusted. So first of all, we have something that just has carbon and hydrogen. I'm just going to write that as CXHY, just because we don't know how many carbon and how many hydrogens there are. It's fully combusted. Um, combustion means it's burned in oxygen and it's good, it produces carbon dioxide and water. So we'll just write a reaction producing carbon dioxide and producing water. Except we don't know what the ratios of these are because we don't know how many carbon and hydrogens there are. We do know that there, it combusts of 18.214 grams of oxygen and then it produced 23.118 grams of carbon dioxide and 4.729 grams of water and we have to find the empirical formula of this hydrocarbon. So before we start doing this, let's quickly go over what are the steps for figuring out the empirical formula. So the first step is you have to figure out how many grams of each element there are. So we have to figure out how many grams of carbon there are and how many grams of hydrogen there are. Then once we have the grams, we convert the grams of each element into moles by dividing by the molar mass. Then we divide all the moles by the smallest number of moles and we convert everything into whole numbers. So our very first step is we got to figure out how many grams of carbon there are and how many grams of hydrogen there are. So how do we do that? Well, we know one of the law, the law of conservation of mass says that the grams of carbon on the left side has equal to carbon on the right side and the grams of hydrogen on the right side has equal to grams of hydrogen on the left side. So if we can figure out how many grams of carbon there are in uh, carbon dioxide, that'll tell us how many grams of carbon there are in the hydrocarbon and likewise with the grams of hydrogen. So let's do that. We have 23.118 grams of carbon dioxide and then we can just do a conversion. So if I could, I could put grams of carbon dioxide on the bottom and then grams of carbon on the top and then that way you can, you can see that the grams of carbon dioxide will cancel out. So what numbers do we put here? Well we know that in every, and I'll, I'll write that over here, so in every uh, one mole in every one mole of carbon dioxide, there's 44 point, approximately 1, uh, 0.01 grams of carbon dioxide. And then in every one mole of carbon dioxide, there is one mole of carbon, and that weighs approximately 12.01 grams. So we can say there is 12.01 grams of carbon for every 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide, and then that way the grams of carbon dioxide will cancel out. Just a quick, quick uh, recap of what we're doing. Uh, we just a quick review of what, what we just did. So we we know that in every one mole of carbon dioxide, there's 44.01 uh, grams of carbon dioxide, and then per carbon dioxide, there's one carbon, and each carbon, each mole of carbon weighs 12.01 grams. So that way we can get the grams of, uh, of carbon. So we do 23.118 times 12.01 divided by 44.01. And then that gives you 6.3, 6.31 grams of carbon approximately. Then we do the same thing with water. So we have 4.729 grams of water. We're going to multiply it. Put the molar mass of the water on the bottom. The molar mass of water is 18.016 grams of water because that's how many grams are in every one mole of water. And then you can see that in water there are two hydrogens. Each hydrogen weighs 1.008. 1. Uh, 1 so then two hydrogen weighs 2.016. Uh, then the grams of water cancel out and you're left with the grams of hydrogen. And we Again, we did that because in every one water, one mole of water, there are two H's. So we took two, multiplied by the molar mass of H, and that gives us this number. Then we can plug this into the calculator. 4.729 um, times 2.016 divided by 18.016. And then that will give us 0 0.529 grams of hydrogen. So we just finished step one. We figured out the grams of the carbon and the grams of the hydrogen. And then I'm going to, let's delete this. Now that we have the grams of each of the elements, we're going to convert them to moles. Um, we just do that by dividing by the molar mass. So divide this by 
which is the molar mass of carbon, and then divide this by 1.008, which is the molar mass of hydrogen. And then when we do that, we get 6.31 divided by 12.01, 0 0.525 moles of carbon, and then 0.529 divided by 1.008, which is 0 0.525 moles of hydrogen. So that's step two. Step three, we divide all the moles by the smallest number of moles. Now these are exactly the same, so we're just going to divide both of them by 0 0.525 and 0 0.525. And then that will give us one carbon and one hydrogen. And since those are already whole numbers, that means the empirical formula is just going to be CH. All right, let's take a look at uh, another example so you can see how, how this is done more clearly. In, in this next example, we are given that we're starting with a compound containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. A little different, this time it contains three elements instead of two elements. So carbon, CX, HY, OZ. It's being burned, so then we it's going to be reacting with O2. Um, and it's, pr it's producing carbon dioxide and water. And we're given that it produces 18.942 grams of carbon dioxide and 7.749 grams of water. And we're also told that we have 12.915 grams of this entire compound. We're going to take a, a very similar approach. We're going to use the carbon dioxide to figure out the grams of carbon, and then we're going to use the water to figure out the grams of hydrogen. And then to figure out the grams of oxygen, we know that the, the three elements have to add up to 12.915. So we just, we're just going to take this, subtract the grams of these two, and then we'll graph, have the grams of oxygen. Then we can begin the empirical formula process. So let's first figure out the grams of carbon. We have 18.942 grams of carbon dioxide. We're going to multiply, we're going to put the molar mass of carbon dioxide on the bottom because that represents how many carbon dioxide, grams of carbon dioxide there are in per mole. And the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44.01. In uh, one mole of carbon dioxide, there's one mole of carbon because you see there's a one here. And the molar mass of carbon is 12.01. So then when you do that, the, gram, the grams of carbon dioxide cancel out, and you're left with just grams of carbon. Which is 5.17 grams of carbon. Then we do the same thing with the, uh, the, the water to get the grams of hydrogen. 7.749 grams of water multiplied by, put the molar mass of water on the bottom, 18.016 grams of water, because that's how many grams there are per one mole of water. And then in each mole of water, there are two hydrogens. So we're going to take two multiplied by the molar mass of hydrogen, and that will give us 2.016 grams of H. Then that way the grams of water cancels out, and you get... zero point eight six seven grams of of hydrogen. So now we have the grams of carbon and the grams of the hydrogen. We just have to figure out the grams of the oxygen. So to figure out the grams of the oxygen, we're gonna take the total mass because we know together it has to add up to twelve point nine one five. So we do twelve point nine one five subtract five point one seven subtract zero point eight six seven. And then that will give you 6.878 grams of oxygen. Now that we have the grams of each element, we're going to convert to moles by dividing by the molar mass. So we divide uh, the grams of carbon by 12.01, which is the molar mass of carbon. Divide that by 1.008 molar mass of hydrogen. And then divide this by the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16. And that will give us the moles of each of the elements. 5.17 divided by 
and that gets us 0 0.43 moles of carbon, 0.867 divided by 1.008 gets us 0 0.86 moles of hydrogen, and then lastly 6.878 divided by 16, and that gives us approximately 0.43 uh, moles of oxygen. And for step three, we divide all the moles by the smallest number of moles. So the smallest moles of the of these three is 0.43. We're going to divide everything by 0.43. And then when you do that, you'll get one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. And then since all of these are already whole numbers, that means our final answer will be CH2O. But if these weren't whole numbers, so if, for example, if, if one of them ended in 0.5, we'll just multiply everything by 2. For example, if it was 1.5, we would just multiply all these numbers uh, by 2. Or if some, one of the numbers ended in 0.33 or 0 0.67, then we just multiply everything by 3. And uh, I know these questions are, are, are long, um, and the process is long, but that's how you, you would solve for the empirical formula when you're doing combustion analysis. First, figure out the grams of carbon usually from the carbon dioxide, the hydrogen uh, usually from the water, and then if there's any other extra element, just subtract the grams of carbon and hydrogen to figure out the mass of the remaining element, and then once you have the mass of each of the elements, go do this process to the, the regular empirical formula process to solve for uh, the empirical formula. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.